I'm Susan. Today I want to show you how to create these beautiful ornamental pieces that you can use instead of a bow on a box or as a gift tag or even in a garland. They're very simple. They're made with some air dry clay and just one mold and you can use it all sorts of ways with any colors you can imagine and you can finish them on both sides so you can do them different on each side. Just finish them on one side and use the back side as a gift tag on a gift so it makes a beautiful presentation and you can just use scraps of things you have around the house. Now I'm starting off with a bunch of cardboard squares. These are just regular packaging cardboard and they are three by three inches. So any size you prefer works for you. Okay, so I'm taking three of these pieces and putting them together. Now if you happen to have one that's a little shorter, put it in the middle, you'll be fine. I'm just putting them together with a little bit of masking tape. And I'm taping them all together. You could glue them if that's easier. I just find tape seems to hold them quite nicely. I just find tape seems to hold them quite nicely. And then I like to tape them in the other direction. Sorry about my snoring puppy. And now you have a nice solid ornament piece. I have some tissue paper here. This was just packing for a blouse that I ordered. I like to keep all my packing stuff I get. I find that I could do quite a bit with packing supplies. Things that just randomly come in the mail we throw in the garbage. And I'm just tearing it up in little pieces. So even though this was just one sheet of tissue, it will cover quite a bit. It's amazing what you get out of most of the stuff we just throw away. Now this is a cup filled with half white glue, half water. It's just what I like to use for almost everything. And this is just a makeup brush. A lot of times people don't realize these makeup brushes, especially after the holidays, go on sale very inexpensive. And this one's a couple years old that I've been still using and it works perfectly like a regular paintbrush. I'm just going to take this tissue and basically cover it. I want these pretty little wrinkles as texture and I want to con cover up this where the side of the cardboard is. So where these wrinkles come in, I actually like those. They have kind of a leathery look. Now if you don't have tissue paper, you could have just covered it all with masking tape. You could use white paper. You could even use paper towels. So I'll just cover three sides, let it dry, and then I'll cover the fourth side. I'll, I'll let this dry, do the other side, and come back. Because now to add this extra dimensional effect, I'm using some air dry clay. And once it's painted, it looks more like this, which is just completely dimensional, as you can tell. And once we add a glaze to this, it'll highlight it a lot more. Now you could also add a little piece along the edging here. It's up to you. It depends what the look is that you're going for. I think just on the top and the back is all I need. And I'm using a mold. These are the silicone rubbery molds. You get these off of eBay, AliExpress, Wish. They're very, very squishy and soft. If you try these with polymer clay, you may cry. They are worthless unless you use liquid clay, bake it, but then you can't change it where I can bend this and make it in different shapes. You can't do that once it's baked. The best clay for this is the Sculpey. I'm using this Sculpey air dry clay. I got this off of Amazon. It's 2.2 pounds for $7 with shipping. And this clay, unlike polymer clay, which most of you see me work with, is water-based. So you don't need to bake this or do anything. It will just dry from leaving it out. But because it dries out, you have to take small parts of it at a time. Now it has a peanut butter type of consistency to it. So I just use small amounts and I keep it normally in a Ziploc bag and I put just a baby wipe with it. Baby wipes have stuff in them that keeps them from molding. 
So it's not like if you just put a regular paper towel in there, it may get moldy over time. I just add a little bit of water to it just so that the bag stays moist because this can dry out very easily. Now the other tool I like to use is, this is just part of a rewards card, gift card, whatever you wanna use. And to use this clay, you can either push it in with your finger and get that feel of where you want it to go. Or you can use the gift card and shave it off. It's got a real funny texture to it, this clay. But for these rubber molds, it's fantastic. And if you've actually bought some of these molds thinking you were going to use them for polymer clay and found completely unsuccessful, now you've got a place to use them. Now when you're going to use it on top of your cardboard, this was some, you can see I had tissue paper with paw prints on it. I have on my hearts. This was with my shoes, it had a name on it. So, so I'm just using literally scraps that I've had. Now I'm just going to take some of my glue and water mixture and I just want to make this sticky. It doesn't have to be super sticky, but just enough that this clay will stick to it. Now what's really neat about these is you just basically can bend it. They're so squishy and that's why they're terrible for a harder clay. This clay is super gushy, so it's a lot easier. And I didn't use any mold release, nothing. I just squished it in there and I broke that piece, but that's okay. I'll make another one. We'll still use this one. I'll just get another piece. I don't really care if these are perfect or not for what I'm using them for. In fact, I can probably pop that other piece out. But you see how I can bend this and move it around and with that glue on there, it just squishes so easily. So I can take that other piece out pretty easily. And I can just blend that into there. The beauty of these molds is they're just a few dollars. They're two, three dollars. They're very, very inexpensive and you can use them hundreds and hundreds of times. Now I did this whole design with this exact piece. I just used the little parts in the center a little bit differently. And then I used this little swirly S design that was in the same mold. I'm going to just use this one mold because I want to show you that you don't need a whole lot of these molds to do different things. And there's so many molds that you will get lost. I'll link this mold, but I don't know how long the seller will have it. So if the link is dead, you'll have to look through the links under fondant molds. That's what this is. So I'm just filling it up. It's sort of like peanut butter. Now, like I said, if you want to use the credit card or whatever, that works pretty well too. And then when you just peel it up, it comes right out. And it's real nice because now I have extra clay on the edge here. I'm not going to worry about that because it's so thin that it blends in. And since we have the tissue paper texture, it blends right in with that once you paint it. So no point in wasting your time with that. I just take my knitting needle and blend it in. If you don't have a knitting needle, take a pencil and put a little nail polish on the tip. It works the same as a knitting needle. But just blend those edges in and press it down. That's pretty much all there is to it. And this is going to look like I spent hours on it. And as you'll see, this was just a few minutes. I was loving using the credit card at first. Now I like using my finger, so that's why I like to show you both ways. Find whichever way is more comfortable for you. It does take a few times to get the feel of this because this clay is so soft and squishy, it almost feels like you're doing it wrong, but then realize it's just clay and it kind of rolls off your fingers. It's like peanut butter consistency. Now I don't know how durable it is for jewelry, so I wouldn't recommend it since I haven't played with it, but for decorative things, it's fabulous. If you watch my videos and you see my openings with my doll miniatures, this is how I found, came across this clay, was all the miniature artists use this clay because it stays true to size and it's pretty easy to work with, especially molding like this. Now this mold has so many designs in it that I sort of get it into the other designs and have it pop out as I'm working. And my glue is already dry here, so 
Let me just get a little bit more. But what's nice about this is you can bend the design and shape it any which way that you like. If you had used that for polymer clay and baked it, you're kind of stuck. And I love to use ornaments as gift wrap instead of a bow. I think an ornament makes so much nicer of a gift. Now in the center here I'm going to use just these little curly cues. This is one of my favorite molds because all these little curly cues are just so versatile. And what I like about this ornament is you don't have to make it with Christmas colors. You can just do it white and gold or silver, just some basic colors. And you can hang it on a bottle or a, a lamp, different things. It doesn't have to be a Christmas type of thing. But it could look really pretty on a package. And it's mostly recycled things, so it makes it even more affordable and just fun. And here we'll just use the curly cues in the middle. Now I'm going to hang this so it's in a diamond shape. I'll put the hanger up here. I don't want it square. I just like the way that shape is better. And the squares are so easy to make. Super easy to cut out. But I just used a scissor so the heart wasn't much harder. But you can see what a beautiful design I got there. And that only took us 10 minutes. Now I'll let this dry overnight, but if you... So I have my pieces all done and they're dry. Now I've only done one side because I wanted to use these as gift tags. I just think they'll be really pretty. And I'm just going to paint these with some white acrylic paint. You could use black also, just depending on the look you're going for. I'm kind of going for that shabby chic look. I have some acrylic paint, this Artist Loft. Any brand will do, whatever you have. This just happens to be what I have. This is a thicker paint. So I just want to show you, add a lot of water. In fact, I'm just going to open my water bottle and add some water to it. I want this to be more of a watery consistency. Think of heavy cream type of consistency because it's just easier to get into all these little nooks and crannies. And there was a little pink on my brush, but that's not going to matter. This is just a base coat anyway. You can use any color you want on these. If you use the white as a base coat, you'll get all pastels. If you use black as a base coat or a dark brown, you can use golds and silvers really well and you'll get a much better result. I'll do one of these with black just to show you the difference. They're both quite beautiful. It's just, what's the result you're looking for? Since we've used regular white glue on these, paint may have a tendency to crack. If you bought crackle medium, you would get that same effect, but white glue does it. Now the nice thing about this is, if it gives that crackle effect, it's a neat shabby chic and a great spot for the paint to go into those little cracks. So if you brush over this too much, you'll definitely get more crackle. But see when it's thinner, it starts to go into those little crannies a lot better. And as this dries, it won't be so bulky because I have a lot of water in there. But if you don't add the water to this, this will be a nightmare step for you to go through. And it just takes a little bit longer for it to dry with the water in it. But trust me, you'll be happy you put it in there because see how nice and quick I was able to just coat this? Or you could spray paint this. That's another alternative. I just find that it's just as easy to take a brush to it. I don't actually have any spray paint, so we're gonna work with what I have. And if you have spray paint that's left over, this is a great spot to use it up, is on these little crafty things. Sometimes you just have a little bit left in a can. You don't know what to do with it. This is a perfect type of item. So that didn't take but a few minutes. I will paint this on both sides and cut. I've got my pieces all painted and they're dry and I just wanna give you a close up and show you how I have all those little crackles, sort of like I used crackle medium. That's basically what glue under paint will do, just regular PVA glue, any white glue will do that. You don't have to buy any fancy crackle treatment or anything. If you don't want that to happen, put a little varnish on these and then coat them with paint and you won't have that. Personally, I love it. It gives that whole shabby chic feel. I think they're just cool the way they are actually. And you could add, if you wanted, just some gold on your finger and coat it, but I'm gonna show you how to make just a simple rinse that goes over it and will make this pop even more. Now you can use any of these. I've also done one in black and you can see the black a little bit. 
there you go. The black is much harder to paint. That's my only warning to you. The lighter colors are easier to paint because this is a white clay. So any little spot that you miss or any little speck will come through. And the cracks in here you can see a little bit more because of the white tissue paper underneath there. I actually don't mind it and I think when we put some gold or silver on this it'll look really pretty it's just a different effect and if you had spray paint it would probably be a whole lot easier now you won't get any of these cracks if you use a spray paint product it only comes through on a water-based acrylic type of product it, the oil base will just cut right through it and I guess this is still a little bit wet. Now the first one I'm going to show you is just a little turquoise everybody seems to like turquoise I know not everyone likes my pink so I'll do one with turquoise just to give you an idea and I'm just using a little dot of paint and you can use any kind of acrylic paint doesn't matter this is just the one I have some craft smart and I'm just going to add about two parts water to it remember you can always coat this twice and make it darker and you can layer colors which is really beautiful it'll give this washed effect and all I'm going to do is put that on and as you can see right away the darker color goes around it with that nice light wash and see with that light wash how it just fills in every area now you can do the back and the sides in the turquoise if you want or you can leave it white up to you but you can see how immediately this completely pops so you don't need a whole lot of paint that's why I only put that little dab of paint out and you can do these all different colors you don't have to do them all one color depends what you're using them for if this isn't dark enough let this dry and just give it another coat but the nice thing about having all that extra water is it just goes into all those little crevices of your flourishes and really creates a wonderful effect so it looks like you put a lot more time into it than you did now if you find that you want a little bit more highlight in this you can just take a baby wipe tissue paper towel anything anything moist and you can just wipe off some of those highlights and it adds so much more detail now if you accidentally forget to do this part and you're kind of disappointed just take a little white paint on your finger and that'll do the same effect but what a difference that makes and now you can see I hardly have any paint left it's just a little bit of water in there so you basically need just a little dab to do each one and that's why I can do them with all different colors now if you have some smaller spaces in there that you wanted to get into that your brush didn't reach into or you missed just go back in and add a little bit more and that blue inspired me to use a little bit of green it's a little lighter than I thought so I may put two coats but depends how it dries this may dry a little bit darker actually I love the way it's leaving the highlights I may leave it just like this it's always a surprise now if you have extra house paint lying around the house that you're not using and you know it's just going to dry up this is a great type of project to use that on now I want these to be a beigey color I don't have any brown paint so I'm just going to make a little brown and brown is just a little orange and red and black or yellow red and black I just add a little bit more red to this and I have a little black on my tray from painting that one piece and I think I want a little bit more gold in there that's the nice thing when you make your own brown you can make any shade you like oh that's much better I wanted a muddy brown and I like using my spray bottles better than pouring it I find when I pour it I don't have much control a spray bottle just gives me a lot more control on how little water I want in there or how much water I want and so I'm just going to give these a quick coat yes this is a pretty brown if you wanted it more gold just add more yellow I plan on putting gold on top of this so I want this to be a bit of a darker brown and I just want to add a little bit of highlight to this so taking a, a wet wipe now the nice thing is if you wipe too much off no big deal just put more paint back on it and if you want to wipe the edges or any place else now if you want to do a heart it's pretty much the same process you're just going to take two hearts and here I have a piece of scrap cardboard that I'm just going to put in between now this has like a print on one side and the cardboard on the other I actually like the exposed cardboard better just because it absorbs the glue and dries faster and it doesn't matter that the heart on the middle is not the same size or it's just a piece of cardboard in between because once we put that tissue paper we'll build up that edge the same as we did with the other squares and get the same result so you don't have to do any particular shape 
This is all just design ideas I'm trying to show you. And you just need this taped about three or four times just to hold it together so that it's easier to work with. That's really the only reason I'm taping it, just to keep this all in place. And there. Now all I have to do is cover it with the tissue paper and the glue, just the same as I did the squares, and I'll get almost the same result. Just and now my heart, I want it to do pink. Add some water to that. I want this to be very pale, so I'm not sure whether I'm going to add some white to it or just more water. I think more water will do it, hopefully. I never really know until I put it on what it's going to look like, but for some reason my hearts have a lot of crackle in them, which I really like. Yes, this is what I wanted exactly. Sometimes you get it the first time and other times you have to play with it. Don't feel bad if you have to play with it. Now, you'll find that you get lots of little air bubbles in your paint, and when they pop, they leave a white spot. Just go back and touch it up. Now, as you can see, I have my hearts all pink, and I have a little bit of pink on my brush, and with this green, I just want to add a little bit of pink in the center of my flourishes. And they're pretty much dry, so it's, it's not gonna really run into the paint. It's just going to sit on the top. So you're not stuck with just one color if you want several colors. And just for fun, I'm just going to put a little line on the edge here. so that you can see, just play with these. They're so fun. You can make them all different colors, all different highlights. You're not just stuck with one color. Now, the one nice thing about using a bottled color versus a color I mix, if I want to make more of these hearts, I can make them this exact color because I have the bottle of it. The one bad thing about mixing your own color, it does get a little tricky. Now, here I have my black one. You can use any color paint you want on this. I'm just going to use this blue because I have it on my brush and I'm just going to paint the background out a little bit. The black just gives you a completely different look, almost like a chalk paint type of a look. And this is just thinned out blue paint that we used before. And you can see the black starting to pop through. Oh, some of the black is coming off, but that's okay because I was going over this with some silver or gold. I haven't decided yet. How the black gives you just a completely different effect than the white because basically this is the exact same color paint. I've just used it with a black background or a white background, just to show you the different effects you can get. Now that I have my hearts and all my pieces painted, I'm going to take a little Mod Podge. You can use any water-based varnish. We'll do the same exact thing. I don't have any gold paint. It all goes bad in my studio because I live in a hot place. So I just mix up a little bit of any type of water-based varnish. Mod Podge is very similar to that. Whatever you have, that's the one you use. And I've just got some gold eyeshadow here. It's some inexpensive gold eyeshadow I didn't like. I'm just going to mix that into a paint. And the nice thing about this is you just mix how much you need. And a little bit of this goes a long way. So this works the same as Rub and Buff or Inca Gold or any of those fancy paints that you buy. And they all seem to go bad on me, and I get so upset that I wasted my money. I found this to be so much more economical, and it does the exact same thing. Now, you can put this on with your finger or a brush. I just want to highlight some of the flourish with a little bit of gold. And using my finger will give me a little bit less. And this will dry a little bit brighter, not much. So all those old eyeshadows that you don't know what to do with, mix them with a little bit of, and even if they're the hard ones, just break them up. They break up pretty easy, actually. And that makes such a nice difference. I really like the way that looks. You can see it more at a distance. And if you want, you can give a little highlight to the edge. I think it would look pretty. Yes, definitely gives that look I'm looking for. And I don't want it perfect. Oh, much different. You can see the difference, so pick which one you like, and that's the way to do it. But you can add this to all of them. Now, I planned on adding it to the black because the black really needed it, and I'm going to use the brush because I want more paint on it. And I'm just using the tip of the brush, so I hit the top of the flourishes. You can use silver, you can use any color, but you can see what a difference, what a difference that makes up close. And this one, I definitely want to get the edge. I like this blue, it's a very masculine one. This would be great for a man's package. 
And you don't have to use this for Christmas, you could use this for any holiday, any occasion this would work for. And now you can see that black really stands out. And we'll hit the blue with a little bit of a gold flourish. You can see just the tiniest amount. And if you're not into the gold, leave it the way it was. But you can see how that really dresses that up a lot. And our brown ones definitely need a little bit of gold. I've already added some other colors here, so I'm just adding the gold with the pink and the green that they already have on it, just in between there. Just a light coat over the edge kind of highlights that brown. It really complements it without being too much, and you don't have to worry about it being perfect, and it just gives that leathery, weathered look. Now I need to make a hanger, and I have this old piece of a sheet that I bought just to cover the back of a cabinet, but I save every little scrap, and as you can see, these colors match perfectly. Even this minty green one will look perfect. So I'm going to use this as a hanger, and I may use some of it at the bottom for a tassel, and I want it to thread a little. So I'm just going to cut it into strips and rip it. And the easiest way to do it is just with this cotton fabric, it'll shred straight down. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is make a tassel end that goes at this end. Now we don't need to do much to attach anything to this because of the fact that they're pretty light. So to create the tassel, I'm just going to take my strips and tie them together. I'm just gonna layer them all up randomly. And right here, I think if I, it'll go perfectly right there. So I've got some little thin gold ribbon here and I'm gonna cut that about the same length. And I'm just going to tie this together. And one tie is all I need on that. In fact, I could add a few shreds of this gold ribbon. So I'm going to tie a few more pieces. Let me cut two more. I think that'll really look pretty at the bottom. Sometimes it's more fun to just see what you can create with what you've got hanging around. Sometimes an old blouse that you just loved the print on and started to get a tear in, or things that, you know, you really just like them, but they're not usable anymore. Sometimes I get more out of those things than I do when I go to the craft store. I'm just gonna put a glob of glue there, and I just wanna put this right at the bottom here so it forms like a tassel. And I made another one for this one, so I want to glue this one down. But there we have our tassel ends. And so here we've got another piece of fabric. I always have scraps of this gold ribbon. And I'm just going to tie it right here so that I, ha I want those fluffy ends at the top here. So it's sort of like a bow. And what's nice about making a piece like this is if you put it on a gift, it almost is a little gift in itself. And it really shows that you personally care. It's going to glue on both the sides here. And I think I'm going to glue that gold little sparkle down just so that it stays in place. Yes, that's much better. And there we go. Now, if you wanted to, you could add some rhinestones to this. I'll add some Dollar Tree rhinestones. I have some just to give you an idea. And here you can see that those little hearts, I created a garland and hung it from my fireplace. Now I have a huge eight foot fireplace, so I need a few more to add to it, but they make a beautiful striking garland. Now I want to give you a close up of everything that I've created using the same method, just to give you some ideas. These were just some simple inexpensive rhinestones. They're just plastic rhinestones that I've had and how they can just dress up a piece, but you don't need to add the rhinestones. You can just do it with paint. This one I created with the black base, with the blue on top and the gold, and I just added these beads that were from a children's necklace at the Dollar Tree, and I was able to do two of them just from one necklace, just to give you an idea of how far they go, and this was just a scrap of ribbon that I had left over from I have no idea what. And here's the mint one that I added the pink and gold to, so it just gave it a little bit more of color to it and it matches perfectly with just this scrap of fabric that I had that I never knew what I was going to do with but sometimes when you keep things you find a use for them and here's the other green one and I just added the gold to this and I had some pearls that were from Dollar Tree that I just glued on they were like half pearls
This was just the brown paint that I added a little pink in the middle with some gold and just a little gold on the trim and I did both sides. This side I did a little bit lighter with just the pink and no gold so you can use this any which way you like. But just a string is all I have on this. Just some string and I created a tassel at the bottom that I just glued at the bottom. And here was the blue one that I did on the white and this is just some Christmas trim that I had that I added to that little girl's necklace because I didn't have as much of the beads on this one and I wanted to add a little bit of gold to it. So I also just used it for the hanger just to give a different look to it. And here I used one on a gift package and this is just the brown paper like this that you get in packaging. I had gotten, my daughter bought a printer and this came in the box with the printer just packaging around it. I always keep this paper, it's great for crafts. And I also wrap a lot of gifts in it just because it's going in the trash anyway, and I actually like the look of the craft paper. I've been wrapping my packages in brown paper bags for 40 years, and I just like the way it looks. I think it's really pretty. This is just some inexpensive jute twine that I had just to try to show you. You can use anything that you have around the house. So I hope I gave you lots of inspiration and ideas, and thanks for watching. 